Before there was internet fraud and phone scams, there were always swindlers. Female swindlers, too. Discover the stories of women from the past who not only survived, but thrived as con artists and thieves. How did they use their feminine characteristics to swindle in a world where men made the rules? Join me, Lucy Worsley, historian and author, and my all-female team in Lady Swindlers, wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about women who found themselves at the center of controversy, whether deserved or not. On the morning of August 24th, 1572, blood ran in the streets of Paris. A few nights prior, a long-awaited wedding ceremony between two families, the Protestant House of Navarre and Catholic Valois, began with nuptials and devolved into all-out bloodshed. The violence continued in the city and in the countryside. It would be days before anyone could begin to count the dead. In the aftermath, all eyes turned to a woman dressed all in black. For centuries to come, historians would debate whether she was the instigator of this massacre. She was the Serpent Queen, Catherine de' Medici. Catherine would eventually reign over France for decades but she was born on April 13, 1519, in Florence. Her father was the Duke of Urbino, and her mother was a distant cousin of the King of France. While her birthright might sound very noble, Catherine herself didn't have any royal blood. She was a Medici, part of the powerful Italian banking family. But even that claim to power quickly vanished. Within a month of her birth, Catherine was orphaned, Before she was 10 years old, rebels ousted the Medicis from power and took Catherine captive in a convent. She grew up under the watchful eye of the nuns there, until, in 1530, the rebels surrendered and the Medicis returned to power. Still, Catherine was an orphan with no claim to power. Well, she had one recourse. Her uncle was the Pope. That connection came in handy when the Pope arranged 14-year-old Catherine's marriage to 14-year-old Henri, Duke of Orleans, the son of the French king. Now, Catherine had a stable royal connection to the Valois lineage, but her marriage was just about the only thing keeping her afloat. Soon after her wedding, her uncle, the Pope, died, which undercut Catherine's own importance as a strategic match. Then, just a year into their marriage, Henri started up what would become a lifelong affair with an influential noblewoman. To top it all off, Catherine wasn't exactly well-off in society. She was a foreigner, a Medici in a court of French royals, and a woman in a hierarchy where wives held power through their husbands and sons. For a decade, she and Henri went without a child, and Catherine bore the brunt of anxieties and gossip over the future of the Valois dynasty. Finally, in 1544, Catherine gave birth to their first son, Francis II. Catherine would eventually have ten children, seven of whom lived to adulthood. She dedicated herself to their education until in 1547 her father-in-law, the King of France, died, and Catherine added being Queen of France to her daily duties. The main conflicts in Europe during Henry and Catherine's reign were a series of religious wars— Protestant sects continued popping up across France, which posed a threat to the ruling Catholics. The most significant of these Protestant groups was called the Huguenots. Henri's reign, though, was short. In 1559, while taking part in a celebratory jousting ceremony, an opponent's lance shattered against his helmet. He died of his wounds, leaving the throne to his oldest son, Francis, who was married to Mary, Queen of Scots. But Francis and Mary were teenagers— and Mary's uncles, more extreme Catholics from the House of Guise, intended to usurp the young king's reign for their own agenda. Catherine wasn't going to let go so easily. She stepped in, tapping into her role as grieving widow and Francis's concerned mother. Catherine tempered the Guise brothers' more extreme anti-Protestant edicts. She attempted to keep relative peace, though she didn't always succeed. Less than a year after coming to power, Francis died of an ear infection. Again, Catherine had to fend off other family members vying for the throne. She eventually convinced them they'd be at greater risk with one of their own wearing the crown. 
Instead, Catherine's son, Charles IX, came to power. Charles was just 10 years old. Catherine acted as his regent, and therefore essentially as the ruler of France. This reign was rife with more religious wars. The tempers that brewed under Henri's reign and were stoked under Francis's came to a head. Between 1562 and 1598, France saw a series of eight civil wars, collectively called the French Wars of Religion. Catherine ended most of the conflict with uneasy peace agreements, only to find another civil war brewing elsewhere in the country. Catherine's main goal was to create stability, usually through exercising religious tolerance towards Protestants. In 1572, Catherine attempted reconciliation in the tried and true manner of European monarchs, marriage. She arranged for her daughter, Marguerite, to marry Henry of Navarre, a Protestant. Not only did the marriage fail to bring an end to the civil wars, it led to a massacre. During celebrations in Paris, a Huguenot leader was murdered. From that point on, it was carnage for the hundreds of Protestants who'd gathered for the wedding. It would become known as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. Thousands died in the following weeks as the conflict rippled out to the countryside. To this day, there's no direct evidence to tie Catherine to the massacre. Certainly Catherine and her Guise allies stood to gain from such an attack on Protestants. Whether or not Catherine actually instigated the conflict, rumors flew. There were also accusations of witchcraft and killing a Protestant noblewoman from afar with a pair of poisoned gloves for good measure. Catherine continued to watch over the wars of religion for the rest of her life. She stayed on as regent when Charles died at the age of 23, and her third son, Henry, took the throne. Catherine continued to advocate for resolution, but her efforts were futile. Before she died, she saw Henry orchestrate the assassination of Guy's leaders. Catherine died in 1598 at the age of 69. Henry was assassinated a few months later. With his death came the end of the Valois dynasty on the French throne. All month, we're talking about women of controversy. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. As always, we'll be taking a break for the weekend. Talk to you on Monday. Before there was internet fraud and phone scams, there were always swindlers. Female swindlers, too. Discover the stories of women from the past who not only survived, but thrived as con artists and thieves. How did they use their feminine characteristics to swindle in a world where men made the rules? Join me, Lucy Worsley, historian and author, and my all-female team in Lady Swindlers, wherever you get your podcasts.